Today I am going to give you my completely unbiased review of DIY kitchens. Some of the good points, some of the bad points. This is from the perspective of the person who goes around five years later fixing kitchens when they break. So hopefully you'll find this useful. Oh, oh look at that. Yorkshire flapjacks. Nice touch. Hiya folks, welcome back to the show and welcome to our DIY Kitchens Clayton Kitchen. I've never fitted a DIY Kitchens kitchen before, so I wanted to give you a very quick kind of rundown of some of the positive things, some of the negative things, and just give you a completely unbiased overview of what I think of this. I've fitted a lot of different types of kitchens over the years. I'm not a kitchen fitter, so it would be interesting to get the views of kitchen fitters down in the comments below. I don't fit kitchens for customers, mainly because if you don't do it all the time, I'm just not fast enough. It takes me probably at least double the length of time to fit a kitchen as a professional kitchen fitter would take, but I do always fit my own kitchens. So I'm talking more from the perspective of the person who has to go out there and repair the kitchens five years down the line. And believe me, I've repaired a lot of kitchens over the years. As per usual, this is not a sponsored video. DIY kitchens don't even know I'm making a video about this and I prefer to keep it that way because if I tell them in advance that I'm gonna be doing a review of their product, I don't want to kind of skew their customer service. I want to see what their real customer service is like for a general punter. So DIY Kitchens, I think it's the same brand as Ultima Kitchens because, well, it's branded with Ultima on a lot of the bits and pieces. They're a family-run British company from Yorkshire. They've been around for a long time, so they know what they're doing with kitchens. As I say, this is the Clayton range, so do bear in mind that they do a whole load of different ranges of kitchens, so depending on what variant you go for, some things might be slightly different to this. So we'll dive in straight away. I'll show you some of the good points first of all, then some of the more negative things, and then I'll give you a, a quick kind of summary towards the end as to whether I recommend using them. So first of all, these are all pre-assembled 18 millimeter MFC carcasses. And I have to say the quality of the carcasses is superb. Can't really complain. As I say, 18 mil MFC. We've got nice thick nine millimeter backs on them. Unlike the really, really thin, sometimes you just get like the little hardboard backs on kitchens. These have the nice nine mil MFC chipboard backs to them. So the carcasses themselves, really sturdy. They have an oak internal finish. I don't know if that's an option, whether or not there's like white internal finishes. I presume that is an option. I haven't really looked into that. They're fully glued, so you have no on-site assembly to worry about. That makes life so much quicker. Some nice little touches as well. The come pre-edge banded. A lot of cheaper kitchens don't have edge banding on the chipboard on the bits that you ultimately aren't going to see. But it's nice to see the edge banding on these bits here. I think it's just a bit of a more professional finish. And it also helps to prevent any moisture ingress over time as well. We've got 18 millimeter MDF end panels, again, fully painted. And this particular range has 22 millimeter door and drawer fronts. Another nice feature is that we've got plastic edge banding on all of the end panels. And I'm pretty sure it's on the drawer and door edges as well. That makes them far more robust. So you're not gonna generally run into any problems with the edges of the units chipping and things like that. I think these edges are made of ABS, whatever it is, it's very tough. You'll know when you come to like trying to scribe the edges of end panels, how tough these ends are. The only thing that doesn't come with the plastic edge banding or certainly on this range is the plinth. I'm not sure if there's a reason for that. It would be nice to see the plastic edge banding just on the bottom edge, of it, again, just to protect it from moisture because if anything is gonna get wet in the kitchen, it's gonna be the floor. The plinths on our kitchen just came with painted edges. And while I'm sure that's enough to seal the end grain of the MDF, whether or not it would stand up to five years of moisture ingress and stuff like that without the MDF potentially blowing out over time is anyone's guess. I'm not sure. I'll report back on that and we'll see how we go. There might be a good reason for not putting the plastic edging on the plinths. I'm not entirely sure. I'm not a kitchen fitter. Let us know in the comments below if you know a reason for that. Because this is a fully painted kitchen, we don't have to worry about foil 
delaminating itself over time, which can always be a problem five years down the line. No, again, I've seen that on really high-end kitchens where the foil around drawers and door fronts just starts to delaminate at these edges. But again, because this is fully painted and we've got that plastic edge banding on as well, I don't think we're gonna run into that problem ever. I think they do sell foil covered drawer and door fronts, so do bear that in mind when you're ordering your kitchen. But obviously one of the downsides of a painted kitchen is that everything is generally made to order. So these aren't off the shelf parts. If you do run into any problems or you damage something while installing it, you're gonna to have to wait for a new custom made part to be made and shipped out to you. The draw boxes are all branded Ultima, which is their own brand. But as I say, I'm pretty sure these are all Bloom uh, draw boxes, really, really good quality, all soft close as standard. And it's Blum soft close hinges as standard on all the cabinets as well. Again, really high specification hinges, very impressed with those. My only slight niggle is that they only seem to have provided one clip on soft closer per door. And on bigger doors like a 600 door like this, it could really do with two. On the smaller doors, one is fine, but on big doors like this, you really need two. So I think it would be nice just to, as standard, include two of those clip-ons per door. And if you end up with too many, then that's fine. I might get in touch with them and see if they can send us a few extra ones. I'm sure that won't be a problem. Briefly mentioned in the install video, the kitchens come supplied with probably the best cabinet feet that I've ever seen. And that is these Hefele, I don't know if they're Bigfoots or what they're, what they're called, but either way, uh, pretty sure they're made by Hefele. And these are, are fantastic. They've got like a, a default exact midpoint and you can break it past that midpoint if you need to. The other nice thing about these is that even without plinth clips, the way that they're designed, the plinth will end up being perfectly vertical no matter what, because at the top it hits against the bracket and at the bottom it hits against the, the bottom of the foot. So even without the plinth clips, it's almost impossible to, to fit your plinth on the wonk. And then obviously once you've got your plinth clips on, then you've got the added security that they, they aren't gonna just kind of fall off by themselves. My only very slight problem that I ran into here, um, I'm not sure if DIY kitchens are aware of this or not, but the screws that you provide as default, um, which it's nice that they're obviously proper posi drive screws and not Phillips or any junk like that, but the screws that you're provided by default, which I'm assuming offer the plinth clips, the heads are too big. So once the screw's in and obviously attached into the plinth, you can't get the clip on. It can't get past the, the screw head. The screw head's just simply a little bit too big. So I ended up using just my own, uh, I use three and a half by 20 mil screws. Uh, that's taken a little bit of a gamble, so be careful. 20 mil is probably a little bit long, bearing in mind that these are only 18 mil plinths, but you do have the thickness of the plastic on here to cater with. So I found the three and a half by 20s to work fine, and that's got a much, much smaller head on it, and it means that the plinth clip fits over the top like that, you see? Whereas with the screw supplied, it no good. The quality of the whole kitchen has generally been excellent. I really couldn't fault it. We only had one section of plinth that the paintwork on it is a bit dodgy. So maybe there's a little bit of quality control checks need to be kind of ironed out there because clearly it shouldn't have been sent out like that. And that damage has happened before the paint's dried by the looks of it. So that's definitely factory damage and not shipping damage, but it's an offcut anyway. It's, it's not a problem at all. And generally speaking, you're gonna have offcuts of stuff like this. So it didn't cause a problem. I'm sure if it did cause a problem, they would have straight away sent out another section of plinth. So yeah, a little bit of a QC problem, but it's such a small problem that I'm sure over the course of like hundreds of kitchens, you're gonna get the odd little issue like that and I'm sure they would have no problem sorting it out. That is literally the only quality issue that we ran into on the entire kitchen, as far as I can remember. The only other issues that we ran into, they did for some reason miss off one end panel, which was a little bit weird because it was on the original order, but it wasn't on the final delivery note. So it looks like someone's actually taken that off for some reason, and I honestly don't know why. Either way, they sent out a new one, 
no problems whatsoever. Obviously, since everything is custom made and custom painted on this particular kitchen, it did take a week or so to get that end panel, but that didn't cause a problem for us at all. And as I say, customer service were absolutely spot on with it. The only other thing that was missing was one hinge was missing for the big uh, corner unit, the big diagonal corner unit, because we got this unit as a self-assembly unit because there's no way you would have been able to lift that into the kitchen pre-assembled. This is a great big, very heavy unit. But yeah, one hinge was missing. They popped it in the post and it arrived the next day. In terms of accessories and light little finishing touches, the shelf brackets are really quite decent quality, um, kind of clear plastic jobs. So they're quite nice, nice and easy to get in, easy to remove. And we've also got all of these little Ultima clip on badge things. They're just to cover up the hinge screws. If you're bothered about putting those on, it's up to you. I don't know, I'm in two minds. Sometimes it's more of a pain in the backside having those on because it just means you have to unclip them all the time if you want to quickly adjust a door. But I suppose it makes it look a little bit nicer. The only other slight problem that we've run into is with this great big diagonal tall larder unit. And I mean, these are fantastic because they hold so much stuff, it's unbelievable. I can't remember how many units it's the equivalent of, but it's some crazy amount. So awesome for storage. This might come down to my naivety because I don't fit kitchens all the time. So again, if you're a kitchen fitter, please post in the comments down below, what have I done wrong here? Don't get us wrong, it's not a massive problem for us, but I'm more thinking if you're ordering one of these big, tall diagonal corner units, it's just something to have a little think about. And in this particular situation, we've had to have an end panel here, because obviously worktop is going across here. So we need to have an end panel there no matter what. And the problem we've got is that when you open the door, the door is catching on the end panel with it being a diagonal door. And obviously what you can then think is, well, just kind of adjust the hinges so the door is a little bit further to the left, but it's as far as it can go left without it catching on the door of this unit. And this door is already catching on the end panel to the left of it. We've got less than a millimeter gap between the edge of this door and the edge of this end panel as it opens diagonally. So I'm not sure what you're supposed to do here because as I say, if you shut the door quickly, it catches on that end. If you let it close slowly, it doesn't seem to have that problem, but it's just because we're at the full extent of how far that door can go that way. As I say, it can't go that way. The edge of it will hit that door. That door can't go any further to the left because the edge of it will hit the end panel where the edge of it is already kind of brushing on the end panel that's on that side. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'm not sure what you're supposed to do about that. Even if you didn't have an end panel there, what would you do? You could maybe have a filler strip up that edge, I guess. That, um, but even then, no, you can't do that because then you'd see the edge of this carcass. So that would probably not work as well. I don't know. I've done a bit of research and I've really struggled to find what the correct solution for that is. I guess you could put another end panel down this left hand side, but then how do you get the plinth in at the bottom when you've got a, a diagonal unit with an end panel on both sides? Because obviously your plinth is going to be longer than the gap that you've got between the two end panels. Yeah, it's a bit of a head scratcher that. Let me know what you think in the comments. Oh, and the only other problem that we've had here is that there seems to be a really big gap between the top door and the bottom door. We've got the top door adjusted so that it's as far down as it can go. And we've got the bottom door adjusted so it's as far up as it can go. And we still seem to have quite a big gap between the two doors. Again, I'm not sure if I'm doing something wrong. Please don't take anything I'm saying here as red because I don't fit kitchens every day. It's just kind of an observation. I personally would have preferred a slightly smaller gap between the top door and the bottom door. We've got it set so that these doors are held together with a bracket, um, but on this unit, we've got them separate because we've got a shelf at that level there. So it makes more sense to keep them separate on that particular unit. Anyway, bit of a head scratcher that, let us know what you think. This particular kitchen has self-assembly corner fillets, which is absolutely fine. 
I haven't fitted the cornice yet, so don't judge. But just one little thing I wanted to show you. For some reason, the top box that we've got over our fridge freezer, for some reason, the top box came dry assembled. I've no idea why it came dry assembled. And I only found out when I was fitting it and the whole thing kind of fell to bits. I'm not entirely sure why that was the only carcass that wasn't glued together. So again, not a big problem. I glued it together, I sorted it all out. But if you do know why that came dry assembled, do let us know in the comments down below. It's not like we're putting custom end panels on it or anything like that. So yeah, bit of a weird one that. One little thing here, this is a big uh, 1000 corner unit here. So we've got quite a long shelf in this unit. And even on cheaper kitchen units, I've seen it where they've included some shelf pin holes up the back edge of this. Uh, just so you can put a little extra support bracket underneath the shelf in the middle there. Because otherwise, if you've got heavy stuff on this shelf, this shelf will bend over time. It's a really easy thing for me to add in. It's not a problem. And I think most kitchen fitters would just add a little bracket underneath the shelf as standard anyway. It's not a problem. But it's just something to bear in mind that I would, on a, a thousand shelf like this, I would put some sort of center support in to avoid that sagging. I'm not sure if this is moisture resistant MDF. It doesn't look like it, but again, it would be a nice touch to see the plinths made out of MR MDF, because again, this is something that will end up failing over time as moisture gets into these edges and especially on cut edges as well. I generally treat all of the cut edges with a, a varnish just to seal them. But again, it's just one of those longevity things. I've never seen the MR MDF being used for plinths, but if you want to just kind of rank it up into another class of kitchen, MR MDF plinths would be a really nice touch. That's as I say, if they're not MR already, they might be moisture resistant, but it doesn't look like it. I particularly like that it comes with a little thing of touch up paint that is always very, very handy. And it comes with a hardener that you can mix in with it as well. The only small problem that I've found, and this is a, a couple of weeks down the line, that the hardener has actually um, hardened inside the pot. So um, it, it was fine when we first bought the kitchen, but obviously just bear in mind that the hardener only has a limited shelf life. I'm sure for tiny little touch-ups, it'll work fine without the hardener, but ideally you should be using the paint hardener. I think you just mix it one to one as far as I remember, but do double check with the instructions that came with your kitchen. But yeah, nice touch. That is awesome. One of the best things about DIY kitchens is their online planner. It's really fast and easy to use. You simply drag and drop units where you want them and nine out of 10 times, it automatically adds end panels, plinths, cornice and pelmet where needed. You can configure how you want doors to open and it even pops up with help and suggestions as you put your kitchen together. Once you've finished planning things, you can switch to 3D view and even add furniture to get your kitchen looking pretty close to the real thing. There's the odd little thing it doesn't get quite right, so your plan is always checked over by a human before you press go. But on the whole, top marks, really impressed. So how much did this kitchen cost us? Well, we've bought it essentially as a bare kitchen, so no handles and no worktops because we've sourced our own handles and we've got a local company who are doing the worktops. And the entire kitchen cost us, including VAT and delivery, it cost us £3,624.58. And of course, the most important question of all, does it get the Gosforth Handyman seal of approval in terms of installation and longevity as well and yeah it absolutely does i am really really impressed yes there is the odd little niggly thing but certainly no showstoppers and the customer service has been so good that i think even if you ran into quite a major issue i don't think they would have any problem sorting it out for you it's nice to be buying from a british company where everything is made and assembled in the uk as well obviously so yes oh god i can't sit like this for long this absolutely gets a thumbs up from me i'm generally very very impressed the only slight niggle that i've got in terms of long-term maintenance is going to be the bottom of the plinths and whether or not their painted finish is going to be good enough to withstand 
many years of water being spilt on the floor and that sort of thing. So I will report back on that and let you know over time. But certainly from a long-term maintenance perspective, the things that I commonly see fail on kitchens are things like the foil starting to unwrap off the edges of units, the edges of end panels becoming chipped and dented. But because we've got that nice plastic edge banding down everything, I don't think we're gonna run into those problems. The other really common thing is hinges and draw boxes failing. But again, because it's all good quality hardware that we've got, all the Blum hardware, I don't think we're gonna run into that problem either. Obviously, do bear in mind this kitchen's not completely finished yet, so do hit subscribe and you can come back and see the finished project once everything is done and we'll do the final reveal on the room. But I kind of wanted to show you it at this stage before everything was finished so you can see like down inside the units and everything. So folks, I hope you found that useful. If you've fitted lots of different types of kitchens, as I say, if you're a kitchen fitter, please post your views down in the comments below because it would be interesting to get your knowledge and feedback as someone who does this all of the time. As I say, I'm talking more from the perspective of someone who has to go out there and repair them. And as such, I've worked with pretty much every brand of kitchen that's out there. But as I say, I don't fit them day in and day out. So I'm talking more from a kind of longevity and um, repairability perspective. So do post your feedback down in the comments below. It'd be really interesting to hear what you think. For now, folks, don't forget to hit subscribe if you're new to the channel. Take care and we shall see you next time. Tati bye.